I go back to the age of six with the accordion player, Nigel. That's when I first met him. And we were inseparable from about 12 to 18. And we'd be in each other's houses every day without fail, play music together, go on holiday together. And the two families, his family and my family, were obviously knew each other very well. And that's spread then with the other lads. You get to know their families, you get to know their friends. We tend to live in each other's pockets quite a lot of the time, being in a band like this, you know. So, and going back so far, we, we are a sort of family, if you like, yes. Music's always been in my family, uh, on my father's side and my mother's side. And um, I started off playing brass and eventually got into guitar and playing blues and eventually jazz. And I'm just open to all sorts of guitar music, really. We were both in Penland School together and shared an interest in music, um, mainly rock music at the time. And we must have been about 14 or 15, I suppose, when we got our first band together. And in fact, Nigel Hopkins, who uh, was our current accordion player, was, was with us at that time as well. I can remember listening to Django Reiner in Nigel's front room, because his, his uncle was a guitar player, and he had a record, and he put it on, and I knew it was incredible, but I just couldn't make head or tail of it. It was like, because it's like 1930s, and it's all crackling, you know, what was that? Was it? It was so alien to us then, you know, but I realised it was fantastic. We sort of went separate ways for about 20 years and I bumped into him and we decided that we'd get um, uh, a duo together at the time. And we met in a pub to discuss, uh, to, to come down to meet where I was living and, and rehearse. And then after a pint, we decided, well, we might be better off just going out straight off and getting gigs because we'd played together in the past. And we went around a load of pubs and the last one we went to, the guy said, oh, I know you and I know you. Uh, yeah, I'll book you, in fact, I need somebody for tomorrow, come back tomorrow and play, I want three 45 minute sets. So we said, yeah, no problem, and we walked out of the pub and as we were crossing the road we just burst out laughing because we had to, we had to learn three 45 minute sets by the following night. <laughs> they quite enjoyed it, I think, they didn't realise how petrified we were, but uh, it was a quite a successful night. And then what we, the fact that we got through three 45s sort of off the cuff after not having seen each other for 20 years or so, it was a you know, pretty good um, signal that we might get something together more permanent. I'd been playing blues for many years in a blues band, Andy had been playing country, so we threw those elements together, and then I'd always been interested in jazz, so that started to creep in, and there's never been any boundaries 
We've never ever said we are this, we are that. We just that's a great tune. Let's play it. That's a great, and it could come literally from anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter. We've never said no to a gig, no matter what it, it might be. If somebody wants a particular theme night, like um, an Australian night, for instance, or an Italian night, if the phone rings and somebody asks for something like that, we say, yeah, we can do that. A typical gig for us now would be a, a cross-section of all those different styles of music, you know. But um, the pub scene is still very strong for us, although we do the occasional ice gigs, like the Brecon Jazz gig, and you know we get the occasional gig abroad and that sort of thing. Our main work is, is in the local pub scene. Little darling, what you doing now? I thought without me you probably would drown. I was wrong, and for now it's so long. Goodbye, my darling, I hope to see you around. The current lineup is um, Wall, who plays the bass, Andrew Coughlin. Nickname is Wall. He's been with us um, probably about seven or eight years now. Although he's another one who we used to play with in our teens. He joined us when he was about 17 or something like that. The accordion, we have Nigel Hopkins. Again, a friend from our teens. And he's done much the same as Wall over the years. He's, he's, he's toured and traveled and recorded with many. And uh, our violinist, of course, Billy Thompson. He's a fine musician and a very flamboyant uh, stage presence. He likes to jump off the front of the stage and, and whiz about in the audience with his violin. And he's good fun to have around. Because we do so well in Brecon, I'm confident that there's a lot of festivals out there that we could be doing and people keep telling us that. I would love the band to be doing more festivals. Uh, and some of the band members sometimes tour with other bands abroad and come back and say, there's this festival where they would be great and this festival. It's a, it is a problem to try and get your foot in the door in these places. And any, any musicians watching will know that. Once you're in and you're established, if you do well, then it's fine. <laughs> Every year that, uh, that comes along, the band seems to develop and, uh, and move forward and sort of uh, reach new ground, you know. A lot of our music is still out of the jazz scene as well. We still do a lot of folk music, country music and so on, which will probably be reflected on our next album, which will be out in time for, for Brecon next year. <laughs> Thank you. 
both teach uh, guitar to um, well to pupils of all ages. My youngest pupil is is seven years old, and my oldest is a retired chap. And um, it's all styles, really. People who are really keen, they'll come in and they'll want to play rock music because the stuff that they're only exposed to. Then they look my, around my room, which is like packed of all to the rafters with all sorts of different music. And eventually, if they're good ones, they'll say, what's that like there? That file you got there, flamenco. Or what's that jazz file like? Or what's that platinum? What's that about? And then you start them to show them that and they'll get interested in whatever it is there. But I never want them to sound like me. I mean, they've got to sound like themselves and they've got to discover it. And the music is constantly changing because, as I say, we don't have any boundaries. So we're playing a lot of Latin music, all sorts of gypsy music, whether it be from Western Europe, you know, France, the Spanish stuff, which is totally different, Eastern European, that's totally different, Celtic, anything, anything we fancy. The young people, the, the teenagers of today, our pupils, for example, who we teach, are, are getting very interested in the in the jazz thing, and uh, hopefully we pass it on to them, and they'll. They'll keep it going too. Thank you very, very much.